everyone. Welcome to Friday Night with Jonathan Ross. It's a 45-minute special and I've only got one guest this evening, so let's hope he's bloody good. <laughs> I think most of you probably know who he is already. <laughs> and the great news is that judging by the impressive amount of equipment up here, I'm guessing he might be singing a song or two. <laughs> I, uh... I say impressive amount of equipment, uh, but I must confess, the big box on the end is actually Parkinson's dialysis machine. He, uh... <laughs> Around the back, we've got Esther Ranson's iron lung. But, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's not think of them, because tonight it's just me and David Bowie! <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, David Bowie is here, he's in the building. <laughs> Would you like a little peek? <laughs> he's in the green room, let's have a look. There he is! <laughs> he's been spotted. <laughs> Evening, Dave. Look at that. Man. So, join us again next week when I'll be talking... <laughs> There's David Bowie, ladies and gentlemen. And you know it's taken him five days to get here from New York. He came by boat. Silly bugger. We'd have bought him a plane ticket if we'd known. <laughs> five days on a boat, his hands must be red raw from stoking coal. <laughs> <laughs> but there's one good thing about it. If you've been trapped on the QE2 for nearly a week with only elderly widows looking for husbands and people who've been told they've only got a year to live, then you must be desperate for a decent chat and that's what we're going to have. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know, I honestly could not be more excited. Like many of you, I'm sure, I've listened to this man's music through my entire life. Admittedly, sometimes through gritted teeth, but we forget about those couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been waking up every morning this week, and my first word has been... Bowie. <laughs> Until yesterday, when, frankly, the shine was taken off this event a little bit for me, because my cat, ladies and gentlemen, at home, he was knocked over by a hit-and-run driver outside the house yesterday. Aww. And, you know, he's more than just a cat to me. I think of him as like a little man in a furry suit. <laughs> and I could not believe how upset I was. I was driving him to the vet, and I, I was crying my eyes out. I was depressed. My wife Jane was depressed. The kids were depressed. The cat was really pissed off. <laughs> but he's going to be OK. He, 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 he's lost the sight in one eye. He's going to pull through. I'm getting the cat back. But then, on top of that, I got up this morning and I was dancing around the room, admittedly only in my pants to diamond dogs. <laughs> I stubbed my toe. <laughs> All right, Dave, I'll get to you in a second. <laughs> Took five days to get it. You listen to me for five minutes. <laughs> so you'll forgive me if tonight I've only 70% here because part of me is thinking about the toe. <laughs> Shall we get on with the show? <laughs> you better. I've got a sick cat at home to get back to. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. Well, no, first of all... <laughs> before he comes out, ladies and gentlemen, let's just remind ourselves of David Bowie in action. She's a queen, such a queen, such a laughter is stuck in their brains Now she's leading him on And she's holding bibbidi-bobbidi high Oh God, I could do better than that <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, performing live, David Bowie! <laughs>
to meet you, sir. Please, sit down. Wow, and that was great. What well on band, fantastic. Thank you. What a piece of work. That, that was tremendous. Thank you so much for that. It's my very great pleasure. Quite Danish, this, isn't it? Well, this, the furniture. Mm. Let me start with the big question, David. You are a lovely-looking, slim man, if you, uh, you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> and let's face it, you're getting on a bit, and you're looking fantastic for your age. <laughs> I used to say things like that to my mother. <laughs> um, you've never been fat in your no, entire life. No, no, I got a bit kind of, you know, lazy at one point, but I'm back to working out again. Yeah. I, I you work do out the, a lot. the boxing, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I like it, yeah. You want to do a couple of rounds? Uh, you know what? I've been doing some boxing sparring. Good, isn't it? It's hard, though. Yeah, well, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> OK. The, the new album is... Uh, we don't have to do this. I'm doing this because I'm a fan. I like the new album an awful lot. The new album I had a Eve. copy with me, just in case well, you've forgotten to... <laughs> I have about a dozen copies now. It's, it's fantastic. It's, it's a terrific album. It seems to me that this has been better received than just about any album you've had out in the last five, six, seven, eight years. I mean, it's really it's difficult done well. to say, you know, uh, OK. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been very positively received. However, it seems to be traditional now that every album since Black Tie, White Noise is the best album I've put out since Scary Monsters. Yeah. <laughs> Inevitably, <laughs> that's, that's what I get. Um, but this one just seems to, I don't know, it, it's, it seems to have caught people's imaginations. Strangely, I do get the feeling that by listening to the album, we can kind of get closer to you than we have for many years in terms of knowing who you are and where you are at at this stage. You know, Jonathan, that'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> But David, life for yeah. you, you, you seem more sorted. Um, obviously, I, I, yeah, I know next to nothing about you, really, but for, for the casual observer, you seem more sorted than ever before, perhaps. Oh, yeah, I am. Uh, I mean, domestically, my love life in my work, uh, I, I guess in, in, in all those areas of my life, everything is absolutely... I couldn't ask for a better 
thing, you know, and a, a better place to be located. It's just absolutely fantastic. It's just, uh, there's, you know, I, as a writer, though, and I guess that's what you draw on, it, there's a second part of my life, you know, there's an inner, an inner thing. There's like a, a sense of mystery that uh, I, I, I'll never be able to fully confront, you know, there's a, uh, a need to escape from certain things, you know, there's a, look, I'm drawing him in like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going. Yeah, I yeah I'm very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, are you aware of this pressure? Because I kind of do feel, I'm sure a lot of people do, because your music genuinely has meant so much to me, I believe you have some sort of extra knowledge. You know, I'm sure a lot of fans feel this way. But I want certainty. <laughs> but I know, you know you're an incredibly well-read man. You're a voracious reader. You're what's, getting what's on a bit. Me? So you're getting to that point where you come into terms with inevitable death. Yeah. Mortality. This mm. probably should have been at the end of the interview, but anyway, we'll... we'll... <laughs> Don't worry, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go! <laughs> we'll save it. It's the way I tell it. Think about it. <laughs> um, you know that period back then, and what was the period, or what were the albums that we say you weren't writing for yourself, you were writing for other people's expectations? Uh, of the 26 albums I've made, I think there were two when I really wasn't involved, and that was uh, Tonight Never Let Me Down, the two follow-ups to uh, Let's Dance. Which was probably that period, biggest... yeah, it was all, it was the, my Phil Collins years. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, that's not... You Let know. me just explain that a little further. I don't want to get <laughs> into some deep shit here. Uh, it's okay, he hasn't got any fans left. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't like getting in those places. <laughs> no, that's, I know. That, that's terribly unfair. No, I, it's, it's, uh, there was a period when I was, I was performing in front of these huge stadium crowds at that, that time, and I, I was looking, and I'm thinking, what are these people doing here? Why have they come to see me? They should be seeing Phil Collins. They were definitely <laughs> Phil Collins type audiences, you know. And then, that came back at me and I thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> I should be playing to people who don't look like they've come to see Phil Collins. That's what I'd been used to up until that point, you know. I, well, I don't know the guy. Well, a certain kind I mean, of stadium rock then. That's it, it's a talking. certain kind of mainstream yeah. feel that, I, that I'm not comfortable in. Uh, I'm just not comfortable in it, you know. And well, did you think that your, your earlier fans uh, yeah. felt betrayed because of that period? They felt like this wasn't... They had to the, throw the away an awful lot of silly looking clothes and, and makeup and buy some really bad clothes and <laughs> Makeup. You had some great looks. I'm kind of, I'm not disappointed now because you look fantastic, but I'm, I'm hoping that underneath there somewhere there's like a lightning flash painted on or something. I'll tell you what I did do. Uh, my concession to Ziggy. D <laughs> what did you kill Ziggy? <laughs> <laughs> well, why did you kill Ziggy? <laughs> what did you kill Ziggy? You don't understand, there was a war on. <laughs> Your mother and I, we, we, we tried to protect you from all this, but. Well, if you must know, your sister ran away. <laughs> what did you kill Ziggy? <laughs> it was hard for all of us. It was hard for the country, damn it. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I, I did actually have a dream once where you were my father. Oh. <laughs> please, please don't share this with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay, because you were stunned, but you were fair. <laughs> Although the makeup took some explaining at school. <laughs> my concession to Ziggydom is that I, I had those, you know, those, those platform boots. Yeah. The straight, not the bit, those horrible things, the stack hill boot thing. I hated those. Platform boots, yeah. that's what it was about. Solid. That was the great thing. Solid Japanese platform boots. Red with a black thing on. I've just had those remade in black patent leather and they look fantastic. You've got to make sure you wear them both at the same time or else it looks like you've got an orthopaedic problem though. <laughs> David, wasn't that a fantastic... It must have been a great period. Just the, the way bands looked. Everyone looks so grabbed now. You look at bands now, you look at Oasis, and they're like, four blokes, you, you see them waiting for a bus normally. They're wearing anoraks. What's that all about? Whereas, look, and there we've got Roxy Music. Eno, looking... Yeah, Eno. Mad as a mark. Look at him. Look at his trousers. He looks like he's walked off the Rocky Horror Show, doesn't he? <laughs> but wasn't that great? A little bit of Lurex, some Velcro, a oh, couple true. of bits of... Look, there you go. <laughs> It must have been great turning up at Top of the Pops, though. There's never knowing who would be dressed as a clown, who'd be a snowman. Yeah, I know. Oh. Man, that's a look. And that, were there any outfits that you experimented with and, and even you tried them on at home in front of the mirror and thought, you know what, this is just too stupid? That one. <laughs> Did one of your arms knit that for you, David? That looks like the home knit job to me. It does, doesn't it? Someone had a machine, they said, who wants this? I tell you it's what, I'll give it to David. It's a avant-garde Missoni job. 
Oh, it's fantastic. Though. Actually, that was, it was all Kansai Yamamoto. I mean, he has a lot to... Uh, yeah, but, but fantastic style and incredibly yeah. brave. I mean, right. now we look back and, you, and in hindsight you think, OK, you can see why you made those decisions and you can see why they worked. But at the time, when you did that, when you cut your hair that way or experiment with makeup like that, you really were out there on your own, weren't you? It makes me wonder why I killed him off. You know, I was thinking, wouldn't we all be interested in an album which told us where Ziggy would have been now? Oh. You know, where he would be 30 years on. Don't you think that's a cracking idea? Uh, no, I, uh, I know somebody probably write that. <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you still, when you're writing lyrics, okay, do you still experiment with that cut-up technique? Do you still use that that was very famously employed in some of the earlier albums and tracks? I've used this method only on a couple of actual songs, but I've used it for more than anything else. I mean, it can often come up with very interesting uh, attitudes to look into. I tried doing it with diaries and things and I was finding out amazing things about me and what I'd done and where, where I was going. And a lot of the things that I'd done, it, it seemed that it would predict things about the future or tell me a lot about the past. I don't know. I know. Let's see what happens. I'm an alligator. David, I experimented before the show. Yeah. You have awakened in me oh, dormant no. creativity. Oh, blimey. Okay, before the show, I thought, okay, well, you do the cut-up lyrics, I'm going to do some cut-up questions for you. <laughs> and, and I wrote some ideas down, and I cut them up, and I've pasted them together, and I still don't know how you did it, but look, here's one. When Ziggy guitar teeth crotch, enjoying. <laughs> that's, that's Japanese. That's no, not, that makes not, sense if you think not, about it. Yeah, yes. Better than some of your black Japanese songs, makes mate. sense. Here we go. Japanese makes sense. You'll like this one. Oh, yeah. Nietzsche, preacher, creature, teacher. That was not a cut up. It was! You are lying. I helped it a bit. You don't have to you be random, do you? That's, no, you don't. Fat old Ziggy. <laughs> I like that. I want that one. <laughs> Here's one you'll like. If Brian Eno, makeup, Arthur Lowe, Spider Man. <laughs> that could be a mini series. These are wonderful. No, these are wonderful. Here's a good one. This is a genuine one. Yeah. Primitive Jagger, chimpanzee penis. <laughs> David Bowie, is... <laughs> David Bowie is going to perform uh, another track for us now. It's going to be a track from the new album, I believe. It is indeed. Is that, okay, it's, is it Slip Away you're doing now? Yeah. It's a fabulous track. Yeah. It's a fabulous album. <laughs> David Bowie, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in a second, David. Some of us will always stay 
behind Down in space It's always 1982 The joke we always knew What's the matter with you? Come on, let's go. Slip away. Sailing over the coldly island. Trickle. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a slip away. It's from the current album Heathen. Uh, you know, I think that's grown to be, I think, possibly my favourite track on the album. Oh, great. You played the stylophone at the end of that. What a fabulous treat to see the stylophone, not yeah. only back on a, a, a top selling album, but back on TV. Let's see if we can uh, conjure up something from the part. Have you got one too? <laughs> I don't only have one, I've got one with a special holster. Ground control to Major Tom. My, this, I've had this since the 70s. Mine's got David Cassidy on the back. Don't be that's jealous. Incredible. That was before I discovered you. That's, that's all right. <laughs> How did you get a black and white one? Listen this. We're out of tune with it. All right. I'll do the... But, oh, you're, do, you're doing the, the scratching at the back there. What yeah. am I right in thinking? You don't really need all of that. You could just go on the road with this alone. Some people, I mean, yeah, I, I think some people have made a profession of this. But it's a great sound. Do you, um, do you, you like playing around? Presumably, but yours is cleaner than mine. This is boys and their toys. Hey, if me. you want, David, if you want, as yeah, a person. Yeah, that's really good. Yours is black and white, though. I, I could only get a white one. How many stamps did you have to put in to get one of them? Would you like the holster to take home? Do I get the holster with... You want the holster? Yeah, of course I No do. one goes home from this show empty-handed. You're kidding me. <laughs> you can have the oh, holster. Oh, that's so... That's wonderful. And I would so love to see you wearing that. <laughs> You don't have to put it on now. The, the, the cool thing is, I mean, you can really, you can get it out really quickly. Yeah, now, can't you? Yeah. you can be quick on the draw. That's fantastic. That's you never know when inspiration might strike. Yeah, we're, we're at a party <laughs> and, and someone says, you don't happen to have a stylophone on you, do you? you can write. David, just a, a little word of advice. Well, wear that <laughs> naked around the house. It will yeah. drive your man wild. Yeah. <laughs> See, your wife. I'll tell you. Is, I'll tell you if that works. She is. <laughs> she is one hell of a beautiful woman. She'll get a kick out of that. She's an incredible-looking woman. Uh, and she could do better. Yeah, you're right. No, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. Look at that. You she are lucky. Look at that. Yep. She's gorgeous. Uh, she is. See that little baby? How old is she now? 22 months. Wow, it's wonderful. But you're, you're a lazy dad, aren't you? You don't do the nappies and stuff. Oh, are you kidding me? No, I wouldn't go any <laughs> See, you shouldn't be proud about that. You should be somewhat shy. No, it's not proud. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm resolved that this is not my, you know, and I'm resigned is more the word, I think. Uh, and that pretty resolved, believe me. <laughs> I'm, I want to be there, you know, help her through the dictionary, <laughs> help her build a library up, things like that. A teacher? You know. Walking and talking stuff. I, I mean, it, now it's like ideal because she's... I had a conversation today that was just unbelievable. It was uh, approximately... Daddy. Hello, darling. Hello, but daddy. <laughs> Hello, I said, 
Then she got stuck on la la la. David, <laughs> David, you know what? There's a character on Big Brother who talks just like <laughs> that. There's a girl called Jade who sounds just like that. Let's uh, demystify you somewhat, for, just for my own sake, if not for others. What is a, a good day for you, David, in New York, when you're not recording, when you're yeah. not doing the, the business? What's a good, fun family oh, day for you? Okay. What do you do? Uh, I think, OK, I get up around 5.30, 6, 6, just about every morning. I make a lot of European phone calls at that time. Uh, do, I probably, that's when I go to the site, a couple of sites that I look after. Not technically, but uh, I'm kind of overall operator on This is the internet, because you're big yeah, on the yeah, internet. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got my own site, plus I've got a kind of an art site that, that really, the idea is to help graduate students find some kind of way to show their work and get known without having to pay huge commissions to dealers. We usually take about 50% well, of what an artist makes. That's and still so a better deal than you had in the 70s, isn't it, with uh, your agency main man? You were getting about 10% of your total fee, weren't I you? I wasn't that lucky, John. Because <laughs> you made nothing for years, didn't no, you? I made nothing. I had a lovely wardrobe, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My fat lot of good it does you when you're kind of, you know, trying to find some place to live when you dress like that. But when I found that... <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Bloke come but to look at the flat. Yeah, it's a lot insane outside. I'm yeah. sorry, mate, we're full. He's, <laughs> he's got a knitted cosy and his legs missing and his arms <laughs> missing and he's wearing, like, a fur thing and he <laughs> wants to know if the room's yeah. available. <laughs> Let me deal with the... Do you, do you mind talking about your sexuality? <laughs> sorry, why? Because what, what was the deal there? You were gay for a while and then you went... Then you were not no, gay. I was just happy. <laughs> But you were, were you bisexual, were you pansexual, were you trisexual, I, I was, you were... Because I thought being gay was a bit like the Foreign Legion. Once you joined, yeah. I didn't think you were allowed back. <laughs> <laughs> I was just very, you know, um, I just got me leg over a lot. We, we, and did you have relationships with these people as well, or was it mainly... Not if I could help it. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I was incredibly promiscuous. I bet you were. And I think we'll leave it at that. No, we can't because... <laughs> but this is great stuff, David. No, it might be for you, son. But everyone wants to know. <laughs> you must have had a great time. Why would I go into that when I can make a fortune by writing a book about it? Why should I give it to you for free? All right, well, well let me ask you this then, David. Um, we'll right. get to the book. Should... I've never yet tried... Don't even think well, about I've it. never tried the man love, OK? <laughs> I haven't tried... I haven't tried the man on man, the man in man, the man with man. I haven't tried it. I was tempted recently when David Beckham scored that penalty goal. <laughs> Suddenly, I felt a stirring. Should I give it a try? Father. It's such a serious and, and, and a life-challenging and changing question. The answer that I have for you would probably create such turmoil in your soul. You know what? It probably I'm not would. sure that you could actually withstand it or, in fact, last the rest of the show. So I'm afraid I have to uh, politely and reluctantly not answer that question. I thank you. I thank you for your concern and I respect you for that. Let me ask you something more specific. Mick Jagger has been knighted. He's Sir Mick Jagger. And we had the big uh, concert at Buckingham Palace and of all people, you know, Ozzy Osbourne was playing there amongst others. Does it, does it interest you, that kind of thing? <laughs> would you be, would you like to be knighted? Would you accept that honour if it was bestowed upon you? Would I, um, I think I would suggest that they give it to somebody who would give it then. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't... It's not... There's some people, there's some people who kind of really, they feel, they, you know, maybe that it's something that enhances their life and whatever. I'm not sure what I'd do with it. I'd lose it or break it. Or, on, or put it in a drawer and lose the key or, you know, I wouldn't know what, I don't, wouldn't know what it's for. I wouldn't know uh, how it would enhance my life. Sir David Bowie does sound peculiar, it doesn't sound quite right, does it? I, you know, I, it's just not on my shopping list <laughs> at all. What do you, do you miss things about this country though when you're not here? Because I know you're, you're a fan of a lot of the new British comedy, I know you're, you're a fan of League of Gentlemen, I believe. Yes, um, of course. Harry Hill, you invited Harry to Hill, perform for your meltdown. Harry Hill is a, a terrific, uh, manly uh, kind of, you know, There's stalwart a, gentleman. Can I show a clip? I don't know if you've seen this clip recently. I remember when it went out. 
is you're on the Kenny Everett show. And David, you'll forgive my language, <laughs> but it's one of the weirdest things I've seen <laughs> in my entire life. This must have been, what, about 80... I, uh, I think it was Smackdown 80. 80. It was, it was, I think it was a Christmas Eve show. OK, fact. this is, uh, this is uh, David. It's New Year's Eve, coming from 79 into the new okay. decade. Yeah. This is the way to celebrate it. David Bowie with Kenny Everett. Boys keep swinging, boys always work it out. What are you doing in those trousers? And stop it, whatever it is! Uh, look at your uh, lily livered mincer. Oh, do you know, I was in the war, but I didn't see you there. Mm. I fought for people like you, and I never got one. <laughs> oh, look at you. Have a good mind to hit you with my umbrella, but I think you'd enjoy it. And why should you have all the fun? So why don't you hit me with yours? Go on, please. <laughs> Go on, please. Now, chase me round and call me names. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> man. And you try and tell that to the kids today. <laughs> they don't believe you. That was so strange. Did, do you remember doing that? Yeah. Ah, oh, he was lovely. He was lovely. Yeah, smashing guy. You know, you worked with so many great people over the years. Uh, I was thinking about that Bing Crosby Christmas special one. <laughs> yeah. Where you sang Drummer Boy with Bing Crosby, which is yeah. just such a fabulous but odd juxtaposition of, of like, iconic pop figures. I don't think he knew he'd sung it with me. I mean, <laughs> he was already at a place where not much... You know, he wasn't kind of uh, reacting to very much around him. I mean, he was pretty old by that time. And he was just this little old fella on a stool. Hello, David. You know, and... Uh, Hi, Bing. Hmm? <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm David Bowie. Hello, David. You know? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> but it's kind of like that. It's actually a wonderful piece of, of music together. It's a really it comes out every year. I mean, yeah. it, it keeps going into <laughs> the Christmas chart. Let me know, can I ask you about a period which I, I wasn't the biggest fan of, David? That's, uh, go on. Tin Machine. Yeah. Now, you were 42, 41 when you started Tin Machine? Uh, oh, I can't do the math. Yeah, you were. That whole thing to me screams midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. Uh, it really imploded on itself. We had a lot of personal, had a lot of personality problems within the band. I didn't realise what it meant to be in a real democracy until I kind of, <laughs> I demanded one. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't work that way, does it? Uh oh, but he's demanding a democracy. Watch out. <laughs> Yes, sir. How do you want it run, sir? <laughs> it sounds like that, doesn't it? Like, but I suppose it, it would right, have gonna to be... be we're all going to be equal, OK? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> David, um, your internet site, I'm a member of your internet site. I have a Bowie <coughs> net address. <laughs> I go on, I look at it. It's a fabulous oh, looking site. this is scary. Site. But, you know, well, it's great. And, and I know we have people here involved with it as well. Um, but I'm curious about when you're in the internet, because someone had told me, and I don't believe this is true, that Iman, your wife, limits the time you're allowed to spend on the internet? She doesn't limit anything I do. <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. But do you find it best to leave, like, a Word document open so that if your wife comes in when you're looking at, for example, <laughs> fatladybendsoverforyou.com, yeah. you can quickly click on the other thing, yeah. hence hiding the screen and therefore keeping the relationship intact? <laughs> is, it, is this... Let, let's go back a little while to an earlier uh, problem that you had. The, the, is this it's something to do with a man and man love thing? No, I, 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 I'm the least bi-curious guy you could meet, David. And yet, I do like looking at pictures of naked ladies, ideally smiling. Good Lord. You must occasionally look at a bit of the old porn on the internet, David. David. No. Nope. You know what, that's a good thing. And uh, as I grow slightly more sober and mature and decide that I would like to impress you, I'm going to stop looking at it as well. <laughs> You're going to be a better man for it, you know, and, and your children are going to thank you. Well, the, the boy might want to find a few things lying around when he hits 13. You've got to pass a few magazines on it, you little fella. What about your son? <laughs> When, when Duncan was growing up, you must have said... That little the, the fellow old... is 31 years well, old. Well, OK. <laughs> well, he'll hit puberty any day now. 
Did you, know, did you ever have a father-son talk to him like a kind of birds and the bees type thing? Because from you, that must be quite something. Yeah, I believe, I believe <laughs> it was more of a monologue. <laughs> <laughs> With you, it's the birds and the bees yeah. and the mollusks and it anything else you so fancy to him. Yeah. Why did no one get hurt I, and it's consensual? Well, yeah, I, I think, I, I don't know, he'll have to remind me, I'm sure, but I'm quite, I think I was quite loutish about it. And quite graphic and full of, you know, bonhomie and backslapping and, eh? <laughs> Did you find it tough being a dad first time around? Yeah, because I was absolutely not prepared for all the responsibilities that inherently are part of it, you know. And uh, I'd like, firstly, my son and I get on incredibly well. And uh, he's a wonderful man. Uh, he's grown up to be just beyond my expectations of what, you know, one's own child can grow up to be. He's just terrific, kind-hearted, honest, uh, straight ahead. I, he's just a great guy, you know? And uh, I'd like to be around for quite a long time for my daughter, too. You know? Well, and we would like you to be around for a long time, not just yeah. for your daughter, but for us as well, David, if that doesn't seem selfish. Oh, all right. Let's celebrate the release of uh, the new David Bowie album, which is fabulous. I, I don't know if you have a copy, but it's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, it's called Heathen. It's out now. This is a terrific track of it called Everybody Says Hi. But before we do that, David Bowie, thank you so much. Oh, it's nice. Thank you. David Bowie, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Στη Ζυγισάρα. Just crash 